New Zealand is famed for its beautiful coastline and abundant sea life. But under the waves, the scars on the seabed tell a different story. Dredging, one of the least environmentally friendly fishing methods, has torn wild shellfish from their beds and ripped up everything else in its path, leaving a barren wasteland that may never recover. One of the major issues worldwide is that shellfish reefs like mussel reefs have been destroyed on a huge scale. Then you lose that conveyor belt of baby fish that are being fed into your wider environment. Your overall diversity and abundance of fish declines and people have less fish to catch and eat. Dr Andrew Jeffs is a marine biologist at Auckland University and he says around the world the loss of mussel beds has damaged the health of coastal waters. But in New Zealand, driven by communities, restoration projects are underway using empty mussel shells. Mussels are amazing because they can form these reef structures which become like living habitats in themselves. They're like coral reef made up of living organisms. Dr Jeffs calls mussels the superheroes of the sea. A single mussel can filter up to 250 litres of seawater a day. They shelter small marine life and provide food to the hungry fish. These bivalves can attach themselves to surfaces and each other with threads called byssus. This allows them to adapt to different habitats, whether it's being farmed on ropes or growing naturally on the seabed and rocks. They are also great carbon sequesters. With the rising levels of acidity in our oceans, mussel shells absorb carbon as they grow, around 218 kilograms per tonne. In the North Island, near the city of Auckland, is an area known as the Hauraki Gulf that covers 1.2 million hectares. It's home to a myriad of islands and five marine reserves. But overfishing in the past has cleared several areas. Nearly a thousand square kilometres of mussel beds were taken out. And when they ran out, the market was still there, but the mussels weren't. So they then moved to other places around New Zealand and wiped out other areas of mussel beds. Those mussel beds haven't recovered in the years since. So the fishery died out in the 1980s. And since then, we, we haven't seen a recovery. And their loss has been keenly felt by coastal communities who came to Dr Jeffs asking for help to restore the beds of the native New Zealand green-lipped mussel. A community group approached me and said, you know, we want to do something about putting these mussel beds back. Uh, can you give us a hand? Can you, you know, uh, do some research on it to see whether or not it's working when we go ahead and do it? From that initial approach, we've carried on working with community groups, with local Māori tribes. The idea was to create an artificial reef of old mussel shells that living mussels could attach to. Whose idea was it to use old mussel shells? It's been well used for oyster restoration overseas, but it hasn't been uh, suggested for mussels in New Zealand. So it was really a, a matter of giving what's worked for oysters to see whether it'll, it'll work for mussels here in New Zealand. The support they've had has been overwhelming. We've got companies donating mussels. We've got companies providing us with boats for free. They're aware of what the positive benefits of having a mussel reef in place are, and they're keen to see those benefits coming back. Beds need adult mussels to produce baby mussels, but they also need something to bind to. So PhD student Emily Benjamin is designing and implementing three restoration projects, putting mussels back where they were historically found in the Marlborough Sounds, a system of drowned river valleys formed in the last ice age at the tip of the South Island. New Zealand's Greenland mussel is unique in many ways. It's beautiful. Um, it has a very distinct green lip on the outside where most of the world is used to seeing the blue or black mussel. And also the Greenland mussels get a lot bigger and so they're great for farming. And it's become a big fishery for New Zealand and it creates a lot of revenue. We see video of the Marlborough Sounds and it looks beautiful, but is it a different situation under the water and is that due to the mussels being taken away? In some places where the mussels were severely over harvested, we do see that 
because mussels used to filter the water and bind the sediment, we now see that there is much more barren underwater habitats that are more muddy and less inhabited overall. And those are the places that we look for to restore the mussels to. Last year, with the help of multiple different groups, companies and authorities, Emily started the restoration project in Polora Sound. We put down about 12 tonnes of recycled shell, but with the ultimate goal that we would have about a 20 centimetre thick layer along the seafloor to put the mussels on top of. And then we went down with our rakes and we attempted to rake the shell into these large rectangle areas. And just after one day of the shells being deployed, you could see as I was swimming along that the recycled shell had binded some of the sediment and actually made the visibility in the water just from me diving was better. So I felt um, that was sort of a big moment for me because I thought, okay, I think this is going to work and the mussels are going to be happy on this shell layer. The next step is to put mussels on the shells and Emily has every reason to feel confident after the success of similar projects in the Hauraki Gulf. In 2012, the Mussel Reef Restoration Trust was formed and so far, Revive Our Gulf has put down around 180 tonnes of mussels. So we grow mussels on a mussel farm and then we harvest them, sort them out and place them on the seafloor to form a bed. And so we've been uh, working at different ways of deploying them on the seabed, trying them at different sites, putting them in muddy sites versus less muddy sites, putting them in exposed sites and less exposed sites to see how well they do and to work out what's gonna work best in terms of trying to establish a new mussel bed. But the Marlborough Sounds at the top of the South Island has a different marine environment to the Hauraki Gulf, so the methods have been adjusted. Is that the first time in the South Island that you've tried dropping old mussel shells? Yes, and in fact I, I suspect it's the first anywhere in the world. I, I'm not, uh, I haven't seen any other literature of deploying mussel shells to uh, create a, a new seabed habitat to then put uh, live mussels on to try and get them established uh, more effectively. In the Gulf, the mussels and the environment are flourishing. We know that the beds are stabilising the sediment and altering the way the sediment is taken out of the water column and, and put down in the seafloor. We also know that excessive nutrient coming from fertiliser off the land, they are utilising that nutrient and actually breaking it down. And we also know that the beds have somewhere between five and ten times more juvenile and small fishes living amongst the habitat. Internationally, these projects are attracting a lot of attention and Dr Jeffs and his colleagues have contributed to a global guidebook on how to restore mussel reefs. The ecological benefits will continue to be monitored in the Gulf, while the project in Polora Sound is just beginning. Emily and the team gathered 20 tonnes of adult mussels and readied them for their new home at two different locations. Down below in the turquoise waters were 12 rectangular plots, six on shells and six on the muddy seabed to compare results. It's rewarding work that Emily hopes will see the marine environment flourish for generations. My dream would be to take my grandkids to the places where I had put the uh, the mussels down and be able to scuba dive with them and to see that the mussels are still doing okay and to see new larval recruitment and yeah basically that the mussels will have different generations just like I will. <laughs>